view of the sea. Have you ever heard the expression, let sleeping dogs lie? Chinatown. Los Angeles, California, May 10th, 2014, 1438 17. That happens once, twice in a career. Some detectives never get once. Today was why Osgar applied to the police academy. More than Chandler or Hammett, today was Conan Doyle, Columbo, CSI Take Your Pick, Sherlock Holmes, the BBC reboot with Benedict Cumberbatch and Martin Freeman, the Clive Buckle or Bilbo Baggins, depending on your quest. Olsger had, had no quest, only the usual questions. And this morning, out of the splash, the answers had materialized. Oz can still see Belasco ha hailing the mayor, mail carrier, who by that point had already started to fill his canvas bag with envelopes, waterfalls spilling off his pith helmet with each reach, Belasco saying something amusing enough to get both men smiling, focused on the insides of the mailbox. Then Belasco was yelling something. He'd seen something. Officers starting to move his way. Even that boot stand Gebbets, Gebbets starts sprinting, which only got more people running. P2s doing their best to keep pedestrians and pests back behind the tape. Someone actually started applauding, probably Gebbets. Everyone looking at Belasco, that face grinning like it never knew a sneer, holding up the arm of the mail carrier like a title fight victory, instead, except instead of a glove, a package. About the right size to hold a flip-flop or a pair of gloves, one in there likely to be stuffed with a lot of $100 bills. Only one person didn't care about Belasco, and she wasn't looking to Osgur because of anything he had figured out. Osgur had forgotten that look. No wave. No smile, nothing lips can give away. Just all of a sudden wide-eyed, as if Nero wasn't seeing him, but what they might have been if they'd made it, if they'd made up. They hadn't gone so fast to unmake what they'd had a chance to see through. Osgur changed directions, not so hard-boiled after all. Gave Nero a hug. Are you fucking serious? She squawked. What's that for? You look like you needed one. Get the fuck out of here. Knowing Belasco, his rampart captain will likely call Osgur in tomorrow about some bullshit complaint that despite protest and repeated requests to absent himself from a criminal investigation going on near Limert Park, he had still refused to heed the proper jurisdictional chain of command. And that will be the last word on Marvin Dorgan Drell, a.k.a. Android, who had put a mind of violence in the service of the plan. There was a time when Osgur might have been might have strained for what thin satisfaction comes from recognition. Though the real satisfaction was already his as he had walked away, greeting the questions with answers that assembled one muddy situation and one assailable solution. And maybe if there were a gaze somehow able to follow him, wandering off like he did alone in that storm, beyond the eyes of P2, Naira Carlton, of others, beyond even those eyes that are somehow his own, how Oz still wants to see himself, at least now and then, shaped in silver, though we take the grainy color, too, of Elliot Gould in The Long Goodbye. 1973. Perhaps whoever commanded such a view, whether street side or bird's eye, sparrow or something larger, probably with far darker wings, approval would greet this moment in Osgur's life. His 1030, which Osgur had been 20 minutes late for, was reminder enough that too often mystery is the norm. As Le at least Gleacious Boo doesn't answer the door anymore with expectations. The crime took place over 20 years ago. Osgur still has the murder book. He still rereads it when he can. He knows the boy's was Gleacious's Boo Gleacious Boo's only child. He knows the boy's mother died of a broken heart a year later. The coroner would say it was a stroke, but Gleacious had described many times how his wife had stopped eating, stopped sleeping. Only thing worse, only one thing worse than puking when you've nothing left to puke, and that's crying. On some visits, they just talk about his wife. Cletius hasn't remarried. From what Osgur can see, he hasn't found companionship either. The TV's never off. On other visits, they talk only about the boy, a conversation that of late has become more and more about all about the boy never got a chance to do, which Osgur knows is just another way of saying what Cletius himself will never take the chance to do. There are crimes the brave learn to let go of, but there are crimes that have it the other way around and don't let go of you. Today, they had talked about the case. His boy, Jasper Boo, just a teenager, was walking home, 
near Coliseum and Hauser, and at not even three in the afternoon when someone shot him point blank in the back of the head. The suspicion was some gang initiation, a knucklehead proving himself with a trigger. Cletius Boo's boy couldn't have been anything more than a victim. He was a clarinet player, played in school and practiced every day for a minimum of four hours. Jas barely had time to tie his two shoes, let alone say two words enough to make two friends. What he was closest to was playing slow, playing two times fast. It was already doubling the changes when he went down. Cletius Boo is not the only one Oscar visits once or twice a year. He doesn't expect anything either. It's not like over a kitchen counter some fact or alternate approach will come into plain sight. It's not even important that the pain come up, but the pain always does come up because it's the only thing he and Cletius have in common. Osgur always feels sick afterwards, some pit deeper than guts, and more than just a reminder, buckling him over in his seat by the time he starts his car. But he does it to keep those files and boxes alive. Where the wall hot hot the qual. Whoever has the choice has the torment. Before saying goodbye, Cletius had gone off on something he had heard on the news. Someone in Chinatown had been killed in an accident. Only the accident left him in pieces, many pieces, or five pieces, whatever the number, carefully appro apportioned pieces. What kind of hit and run does that? Cletius wanted to know. But most of all, Cletius wanted to know, does something that heinous go unsolved too? Afterwards, Plansky canceled their nooner. Olsger was disappointed but still made his way to Post and Bean. In the parking lot, however, a, car, a call followed her text. This time, Olsger heated his indigestion, popped the Tums, and headed south. It's nice to be invited for a change, even if Olsger had to drive through the rain down to Long Beach, south of Wilmington, not far off of West Paseo del Mar. Detective Florian Serbulo raises the Venetian blinds and shows Olsger the view of the sea. Almost nice enough to forget the parquet flowers, floors, cottage cheese ceiling, all the furniture thanks to Swedish design out of Carson, his wet socks. Is it true you might pull the pin? Elaine's applied for teaching positions all over. Wherever she goes, I'll go. I'll believe that when I see it. Seeing isn't everything. Didn't you just drop? There goes that retirement bonus. Have you seen Elaine? From far enough away to think she's make-believe. And her? Osger nods towards the elderly woman beyond the glass, slumped outside an Adirondack chair on the porch. She's sobbing to the paramedic who keeps trying to give her oxygen. She doesn't want to believe. Rented the kids the duplex. Thought they were students. But they weren't. Actually, they were. Grad students. With money. This real estate isn't cheap. Katla, Katla. The bodies are gone, but Florian still gives Olsger the tour. Here's where the three were found, bent over the side of the tub, almost as if in prayer, except wrists and ankles were cinched blue with white cable ties and their heads were submerged. No blood, no sign of struggle. Bleach had been added to the water. I didn't see any contusions or bruises, like if they had been conked on the head. We're still trying to fix a time, a date. The coroner will have something to say, but this went down clean. Katla, Katla, Katla. Everything else is clean too. Too clean. Unless you count coffee beans and a bag of weed in the freezer, or a closet stuffed with Adder Adderall and Advil. Olsger doesn't count it. Not a reporter in sight? Arbor Division is a long way from Hollywood. Impressive. Katla, 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 Katla. Two rooms for four beds. More parquet. More Venetian blinds. The only ACs are in the third room where the computers live. No screens, just domino lines of black, ta or of black towers still on. They're hooked up to cable, the telephone line, satellite dishes on the roof. More than one dish? Yeah, like seven. That's something. How about this? These babies here, as far as we can tell, wiped clean. C3 told us to hold tight until an SID got here. I'm still waiting. Katla. Katla. Aw, oh, Florian, you just wanted my company. Katla. Oz, does anyone call you for company? The dead. 
Only if they're really drunk, Florian chuckles. Katla, Katla. Facts. Pharmacy intact and hardware left standing. No wallet emptied except for the licenses and student IDs laid neatly at the f- feet of the deceased. Eli Klein, Yuri Grossman, Jablom Yel- Lao Song, UCLA, Irvine, and Art Center. Katla, 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 Katla. Congratulations, your first news truck. Past the grill, beyond the porch, a KTLA van rolls up over the curb. Maybe it's Gail. Fuck, Florian hisses. Already at the, already at the door. This is a crime, Floria, Florian starts, but it's not press or pests held dutifully at bay by the tape. Detective Serbulo, Agent Trumet Millie, FBI. And that's that. Florian washing his hands, or shaking hands, handing over the whole thing to the feds. Relieved, too. Terrorists, cyber misdeeds, dark net, the next Silk Road. The usual crap these guys like to haul out when there's nothing left to share. Katla. Osgur sets the skunk. Robert J. Lang. On the sill. Leaves Florian to more hours of protocol. A crowd is starting to form. From the porch, Osgur catches something in the window. Not his friend or even his skunk, but on the glass, a history of greasy expressions there. Some vague smear at something meaningful or not. One mew short of a V. Not something that makes any sense or even connects to something promising sense but still is something nonetheless. And then inside the room, an FBI agent starts backing up. A real klutz. Bumps right up against the window. Jerks back as if quick weren't already too late. Catches Osgur's glare on the other side. Waves awkwardly. Leaves behind one pane of glass, wiped clean. Osgur figures he better go and join the owner now out on the lawn when he hears it. And then instead of seeing the Pacific or feeling the rain... For a moment, memory finds Istanbul when he was a young boy, running hard too, getting closer and closer to understanding a commotion ahead, panting harder how it had been that other rainy day, men his age now and boys his age then, hanging a tree with rocks, making him feel all that he wasn't when he proved what little we can sometimes do or say. But even heading back inside, he might as well find the clumsy FBI guy might as well yell at someone. Osgur hears it a second time, that strange plaintive call which he already knows by the sharpening pit of regret in his stomach he's already too late for. Los Angeles, California, May 10th, 2004, 1452-24.